And they're doing this here on Labor Day weekend to continue hurting workers in northern Minnesota. But don't take my word for it. Don't take our words for it as elected officials. Governor Walls and his administration put out a six-page letter to address, quote, to address several assertions and statements that prevent, that present false or misleading information about state agencies and their role in line three. This is from Governor Walls and his administration. That was sent to Congresswoman Omar and McCollum. In addition to the six-page letter, they had an eight-page claim and response going line by line, refuting the lies put forward by the squad. This needs to be understood by Minnesotans. This needs to be called out. It needs to stop. The project Ambridge Line 3 is 90% complete. It is set to start moving oil within just weeks. 90% complete. It's time to stop the lies. It's time to stop the division. It's time to stop attacking the workers who are making this happen, who are just doing their best to support their families in northern Minnesota. It's time to end this silliness and move forward. It's time to move forward in northern Minnesota. Enbridge Line 3 is happening. Stop with the lies. Stop with the division. Thank you, uh, Representative. Uh, our next uh, speaker is going to be Jason George uh, from the Operating Engineers. Jason. Hello everyone, my name is Jason George. I'm the elected leader of the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 49. We represent close to 15,000 men and women that build uh, this region, uh, including uh, a couple thousand are building Line 3 right now. Uh, I read the letter uh, submitted to President Biden by Congresswoman Omar and Congresswoman McCollum and far too many other uh, DFL elected officials. Um, my first reaction to it was disgust. Um, the portrayal of workers in that letter, my members, Minnesotans, um, was shocking to me. Uh, the ignorance of their statements about our people uh, was very concerning. Um, to say in a letter to the president that you have concerns that workers coming to town are going to be violent or spread COVID, which is what they insinuated, um, is deplorable. Um, we spoke out strongly against it, uh, released a pretty harshly worded statement. Uh, I asked them, and I'm going to be asking them, I haven't yet, but I'll be sending a personal request to all of them that put their name on that letter to come to my union hall and educate themselves about pipelines and about the workers that build this country, because they're woefully ignorant on these matters. Um, you know, I sat through hundreds of hours and heard from hundreds of anti-pipeline folks that have different opinions than mine. I attended every single pipeline hearing uh, that has ever happened in the state, I believe. Um, I have educated myself about this issue from both sides. Not one of the people that put their, their name on that letter has ever spoken to me about this project. Ever. And that is just disappointing. Um, we need to do better as elected officials, as leaders. We need to be informed before we make bombastic, ignorant comments. Um, and I call on them to do better. And it's great to see the bipartisan support here today standing up for workers and this project, which has been approved, is created by the governor, the governor's commissioners, um, you know, the courts, the PUC, everybody, is, this is the most studied project in the history of pipelines, and they've all looked at the science and the data and approved it. And we have a small group of people that can't accept reality. Um, I thank my friends uh, for being here, you know, including uh, Representative Lissigard. It's tough to be a Democrat right now and stand up for workers and projects like this, and he is, and I'm proud to have him here. I'm very, very proud to stand with Congressman Stauber and all the, the Republican leaders here, too, as well. We're very vocally supportive of us and our workers. So I'm glad this is a bipartisan issue. It needs to stop. I agree with Representative uh, Neal. It, it, this, this kind of attack on workers needs to stop. It needs to stop right now. Thank you. Thank you, Jason.
Our next speaker is going to be Matt Gordon. He owns Gordon Construction and is working on the project. Matt. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning. My name is Matthew Gordon. I'm an enrolled member of the Whiter City Band of Ojibwe, located in northwest Minnesota. My father and mother started Gordon Construction in 1983. Gordon started out as an excavation company and went to a commercial building contractor in the 1990s. And in the early to mid 2000s, started working in the gas and energy sector. During this time, we grew from five employees to over 200 today. Gordon is a union contractor that has been signatory for over 20 years. Working with the unions has helped our employees have a sense of pride and security in their economic future, superb health care, and also a viable retirement plan. Gordon started working for Enbridge in 2012 before there was a tribal engagement program. During this time, we have worked on several projects, including buildings, maintenance of the right-of-ways, and integrity days. In December 2020, we won several books of work in the college. Gordon employs 79 Native Americans out of the 259 employees that we have working on the project. Since the project started, started Gordon paid out over $8.6 million in payroll. That does not include the benefit package that goes along with the union agreements. Out of the $8.6 million, over $2.6 million went to my fellow Native Americans. To me, that's economic change and prosperity to our employees and also their families. I'd like to point out the fact that Gordon Construction is not the only Native American company working on a line three replacement project. Enbridge has reached out to several other Native contractors and businesses. To name a few are Whitebird Services, Fond du Lac Pipeline Services, Dirt Divers, MB Customs, and First People Insurance. Along with Gordon, we are the founding members of the Minnesota Tribal Contractors Council. The MTCC was formed as an indigenous contractor business to have a voice in the world we live in. I am honored here to speak today and to voice my opinion and to support the Line 3. Thank you for your time. Go Line 3. Thank you, Matt. Our next speaker is Ryan Sistek from Better in Our Backyard. Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan Sisson. I'm the executive director of Better in Our Backyard, and our goal is to promote responsibleness for development in northern Minnesota, and we are proud to support Enbridge's Line 3 replacement project. Before construction and during construction, Line 3 has been a beacon of hope for rural communities and small businesses all across northern Minnesota as they navigate their way through the COVID-19 pandemic. Enbridge's nearly $3 billion private investment has provided a much-needed shot in the arm to northern Minnesota's economy, resulting in many small businesses seeing record high revenues and many skilled professionals in the pipeline industry having the opportunity to not only make a good wage, but to work close to home. And I've talked to some where this is the first time in their careers where they're actually working within an hour driving distance to home and being able to, to Senator Johnson's point, actually get home every night and kiss their kids goodnight and, and have dinner with their families. Simply put, the construction of Line 3 has been a slam dunk for northern Minnesota communities. As we see opposition groups and politicians come, far, far, come from far away and their jet fuel planes to protest Line 3, they fail to recognize that the demand for crude oil products isn't going away anytime soon. And the current alternatives to pipelines isn't nearly as efficient from both a safety and environmental perspective. As we see opposition, uh, excuse me, the two alternative modes of transportation of pipelines are rail or truck. On average, pipelines are four and a half times safer than rail. And it would take nearly 3,000 diesel powered tanker trucks to transport the crude oil Line 3 delivers on a daily basis. Both alternatives have three things in common. Both increase the cost of buying fuel for the consumer, which negatively impacts the poor and middle class disproportionately. And both are more carbon intensive, and both are much safe, less safe for communities and for the environment. Line 3 is the most studied pipeline project in Minnesota's history after six years of review and over 70 public meetings. And it's well on its way to providing the safest way to transport crude oil equipped with modern day technology and will soon serve as the latest example of truly doing it better in our backyard. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Our next speaker, Representative Dave Lissover. 
Uh, my name is Dave Wisselgaard, and I am a proud John F. Kennedy Labor Democrat, but I'm not proud right now. It is amazing that we have to come here and continue to have this conversation right now because elitists from Washington, D.C. want to come to our state and use this as a platform, not about a cause, it's about them. And, you know, to stand with labor, it's 90% done. This is going to happen. It's time to get over it and move on. The men and women of labor done it, did an exceptional job. The company met or exceeded both state and federal standards. It's time to move the project on. Stop using the state of Minnesota for your platform. Thank you very much. And our last speaker before our questions is uh, Senator Paul Gazzal. Good morning. As I think about this, I actually lived in the Bemidji area for seven years, and to think that they're going to come up there, fly up there, with using gas, and they're going to tell everybody up there that they don't know what they're doing. I can tell you what the people up in Bemidji think. They're going to say nothing but grandstanding, nothing but hypocrisy. Uh, I mean, as we think about what has actually happened here, we're simply taking a 60-year-old pipe, 60-year-old pipe, that we don't think was that safe, and we're replacing it with a brand new high-tech pipe. I mean, what, what better environmental thing could you do than to actually replace that pipe? People are they're shipping it through trains, and that's not safe. The old pipe is not safe. As long as we need oil, this is the best thing that we should do. And yet they're trying to stop it. And it started with Biden closing down Keystone Pipeline. Gas prices went up about three, over three bucks a gallon. When Governor Walz first became governor, his, one of his first acts was his Commerce and Energy Commissioner sued the PUC over Line 3 pipeline. So I'm actually really glad that he's standing with us now because it's been nothing but roadblock after roadblock after roadblock for something that we all need. And so as, as we're moving forward here, I just think it's really important that you see this bipartisan effort. My friend Jason George from the 49ers, he doesn't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, he just wants blue collar union jobs, and this was a lot of them. Representative Whistlegar has been fighting for the Line 3 pipeline and mining. We're, we're joining together over many of these things, but we've had it. We've really had it. And to have the squad come here with Congressman Omar up to Bemidji, flying up there, I mean, such hypocrisy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We uh, will stand for questions now. If anyone has any questions, I want I do want to thank uh, uh, the other elected officials here today uh, uh, that spoke and are in here here in attendance supporting this great project. Uh, it matters, and I think you all have seen uh, what the good projects uh, can bring. Uh, look at the support uh, that uh, is behind us right now. Uh, listen to their comments and understand it's a good uh, project uh, for our great state of Minnesota. So we stand for questions. Well, this is a first. <laughs> Yes, I thank you. Um, I imagine that they're going to say something along the lines of the resources for line three should be put toward more uh, renewable environmental projects. And I'm wondering if you could do that. Yeah, I think that uh, I can't really imagine what they're going to say, uh, but the bottom line, let's focus on this project. Uh, and if you want to get into renewables, then you ought to support mining in northern Minnesota. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what they're going to say. I can't answer that, that hypothetical. I mean, is there any chance that this pipeline could be stopped? Well, I tell you what, uh, 90 plus percent uh, complete. Uh, the men and women uh, that are working on it are proud of the work they did. Uh, that skilled labor force put this pipe in with precision, with the best technology, uh, and they're going to finish it up, and that, that pipeline will be moving oil very, very soon. I mentioned one thing, I think everybody here would agree. I had a chance to go up to Thief River Falls and, uh, and talk and, and meet with the, the highway patrol that we're staging from a civic center in Thief River Falls. And I just think people need to know that they did an amazing job protecting both the workers because they were being followed and tracked and they didn't
didn't know what was going to happen then. But frankly, also the protesters, as they chained themselves to the equipment, all of that, our police did an amazing professional job, and I, I don't want to forget that. No sense in here. Any other questions? Given the original Line 3 was responsible for the largest inland oil spill in American history, what makes you think that the new Line 3 is going to be safer? I think that using the technology, the, the best technology we have, and, and we can talk about technology, resources, innovation, um, and if you want to look at our country, look at the innovation we've done in so many areas, uh, including uh, the uh, moving of oil and transporting along pipelines. And, and again, I mentioned northern Minnesota, a critical minerals mining, I don't know mining, we do it the best. Any other questions before we wrap it up? I think that's it. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Have a safe day and take care of your families. Thank you.